We live. In five, four. I need to give me one of them buns like on iCard. Hey, what's the fuck going on, man? It's your boy, your guy, Hollywood, motherfucking shit. Live and local. I start. I might, I might be the first person to start a podcast without a podcast name. So the name of the podcast haven't been figured out yet, but we're going to start the podcast anyway. So shit. How we gonna be rocking out? Number game, I'm not doing all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? We not doing no what do win, men and women bring to the table. We ain't discussing no 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 bill splitting. We ain't discussing none of that shit over here. We keeping it real, real raw with game. You understand what I'm saying? So uh I'm going to be doing my questions from the live on Instagram. I'm going to keep going live on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, st still continue joining the lives. This is just for you to come back and replay some shit. When them lives just get so powerful. You already know how this shit go. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm going to go ahead and start with the questions over here. Somebody said first question up on the thing was, um, should you market three months for every drop? Should you market three months for every drop? Should you market three months for every drop? And the answer to that is it depends on your situation, right? So let me let me explain what I mean by it depends on your situation. In the beginning, yes, market for three months in between each drop. Why are you doing this? Because you gotta consistently build up an audience. Now your audience is not going to come soon that you make a post and they're not going to stick around just because you made one post. An audience build up over, uh, over consistency. So you got to consistently do something to draw in the audience that's going to really, really stick around for what you got to, you know, got to show, got to offer, whatever the case may be. So it's going to take you time to actually accumulate a consistent audience. So. I like take it for me. Uh, my first month, I probably had got like ten thousand followers, but the the engagement wasn't as high as it could have been. You feel what I'm saying? Because that was just like, okay, he dropped a clothing brand in a time period where everybody else dropping brands. So let's just see if it's gonna be one of those other type of brands. That's what the type of feel I was getting back from that. But I kept doing the same shit that I was doing to market for a consistent two, three months after that, and boom, I got to the point where I can easily drop every Friday because I got a consistent following built up, or I can easily drop every Tuesday or every fucking month or every other week because I done built that consistent following already. See, a lot of people be trying to go ahead and just drop, drop, drop when you selling to nobody. Like, you, who the hell you rushing to drop to? So you got to consistently build that following and every time you drop, you got to go back and review it, look at your conversions, why they left the site, what they left on the site, what they did not want from your site. It's so much shit you got to go back and look at before you can even move forward to another drop that a lot of people be overlooking and wonder why they next drop do just as worse as the first one did. Like you're not looking at any type of numbers to actually improve from the last drop so you can keep those consistent customers coming in to keep an audience consistently building. You overlooking it. So you never worry about returning customers. You just let those customers come buy from you one time. You don't keep no information. You're not getting their numbers. You're not getting their emails. You just let them come in, buy, check out, and go on about their business. You ain't collected no data. You ain't looking at no numbers. You ain't watched nothing. You just dropping and going, dropping and going. You dropping, you get the money, you sell out, you whatever the case may be, you on to the next design. You ain't did nothing to make sure the customer's coming back. So if you're not retaining customers, you're not going to be a successful brand because nobody's actually following along with your journey, which is why it's important to take that time in between drops to use that first drop, market it enough to the audience, show the audience that you're marketing to, that you appreciate it. So when they come back for that second drop, they already know that the shit that they got from you the first time, it was gave, it was given in the right time on a, on, you know, with a good discount, fast shipping, great product, great pro package, everything was perfect. I'm a one, I'm, shit, next time you drop, I'm there. 
I'm, I'm, I'm in that shit. Now you building the audience. And once you get in control of your audience, bro, you can drop tomorrow. Send out a quick test message and everybody that bought from you a month ago going to be right there tomorrow. Because you got your systems in line. So it depends on the situation with if you're supposed to drop every three months. But in the beginning, yes, 100% drop every other three months. Or mark it for at least three months. Let's get to the next question. Uh, do you still get manufacturers from Alibaba? I do get manufacturers from Alibaba, but if you was in my live yesterday, which I know people on the podcast, you wasn't. So let me explain what I was uh, saying about Alibaba. So in Alibaba, I do use them because China manufacturers, don't get me wrong, make great quality clothing. But uh, I use China manufacturers for samples and I send my samples from China to Pakistan, let Pakistan manufacturers make a sample according to the pattern of the one I just sent from China. They send it, I mean, they get it, they make it, they send it to me. I verify if it was similar enough for me to go with, and I'm running with Pakistan. The reason why I'm running with Pakistan for business versus China is personal reasons. I just don't like paying up front all the time. I don't like the extra shipping costs. I don't like how every other piece of the material you gotta pay for as versus tags and, 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 and bags and all that other shit be separate. I don't like to pay for all that sometimes. Sometimes I don't. So if I feel like the Pakistan manufacturer is gonna give me a, a, a better business deal with the same quality clothing because all I have to do is just send him a little package of what I just got from China exactly how I wanted he sent it back to me now I'm being the system so yeah I still use Alibaba for my manufacturers but it's only to get the quality sample that I know I need so I can go ahead and send it over there to Pakistan but you can skip that process if you just go ahead and get the knowledge on fabrics and uh Cotton and different codes for the cotton and all that other shit. If you get your mind into that lane, you ain't even got to worry about getting this whole China manufactured sample and shit like that. But me personally, I'm just lazy and I feel like it's just easy for me to go ahead and sell the China manufacturer what I need and they send it back to me and then I just send it off. You feel what I'm saying? So that's just a little sauce for me on how I finesse the China manufacturers because I'm not paying. $2,000 shipping on a $5,000 order. The $5,000 order should have been, you feel what I'm saying? Let's go to the next question, folks. What we got? What the, uh, caller number three on the line. What we got? Any advice on marketing for brands who sew and make their own pieces? Um, let me see. What can I give you for sewing and making your own pieces? So, if you're going to be a one-of-one type of person that is a great way a great way to start right like that's a great way to start because if you're making one of one pieces a lot of people that's into fashion love one of one pieces so your goal is to find that one influencer that one influencer to put that one to one piece on let that person be a fashion influencer not just a regular influencer the influencer need to be a fashion based influencer why because fashion based influencers have people that's following them based off the shit that they wear you don't want to go find an influencer that raps people not following them for their fashion you don't want to go follow no makeup artists or no influencer that do baby mama side quests and shit like that you don't want to find those type of influencers find influencers that specifically use useful in your field so if you're a fashion person find a fashion influencer that's high in numbers like me myself not to toot my own horn i'm just saying so you send the piece to the influencer let the influencer do the marketing for you this one-on-one -one piece if they do it into their content everybody gonna want to know who made that piece that they got on let that person do the marketing for you in the beginning then you get you four more influencers so you can spread this content out amongst them all and then you just give each person one of one piece and then at this point you need to find your manufacturer so after you find your manufacturer you need to go ahead and get on the same page with your manufacturer to make sure that this manufacturer can make exactly what you making how you make it because you're gonna have to expand at some point because one of one ain't gonna take it for, for you know for for so long you're gonna be leaving too much money on the floor so you got to find somebody that's going to be able to duplicate what you make into the best of your of their ability. 
You feel what I'm saying? So once you find that person that can do what you're doing, now you able to sell that one-to-one -one piece that the mag that the influencer had first. Let him go ahead and get the wear out of it because he's the one that's doing the marketing. All right, boom. So you get the wear out of it, and then that piece that he had, now you release it to the public and let the public go buy because the influencer just did the marketing for you. It's a system. I hope you know how to work it because I just told you how. Literally, that's all you got to do. Get that one influencer, let him do that marketing. That marketing going to accumulate more people that want that one-to-one -on -one piece, and you just build from there. Now, in the beginning, you got to pay to play, but that's just okay. That's just the game we in. You feel what I'm saying? But game is game. Uh, somebody said, is your Discord back open? My Discord is open. Uh, let me see. Question, question. Any advice for manufacturers from Pakistan? Yes, any advice for manufacturers from Pakistan. So I give you out three tips from manufacturers from Pakistan. One, always initiate the business. Don't let them do the talking. You handle the business. Why? Manufacturers in Pakistan, for one, they need the money. Manufacturers in Pakistan ain't turning down no money. They need the money. But if they feel like they can get over on you, damn it, they gonna get over on you. So you need to make sure that you be the one to initiate all business. Two, put their ass on a payment system. A payment system is required for manufacturers in Pakistan because for one, a lot of Pakistan manufacturers have scammers that's using these companies like they real companies and they don't be. A lot of them have access to WhatsApp and just like many, many other manufacturers do and they just going around scamming people. So you need to put a payment system in place to make sure that you're not dealing with no fake manufacturer. And the third tip is always video call, never phone call, never phone call, never text message. Get on the video call because I need to see Everything that's going on while you're talking to me about whatever the hell we discussing. Now, the payment system, what is that? You need to break down your bulk order into four different payment methods. The payment method number one is to start the order. You split that shit up into four ways. The first payment is to start the order. The second payment is when they got your order laid out, get ready to do some stitching, printing, or anything of that source. I need to see it laid out. Once you show me video call that is getting laid out and actually worked on, I see that second payment. That third payment is due when packaging is started. When you're done with my order and you're starting to package it, I see everything is getting packaged, so everything is done. I send that third piece of the piece of the menu, uh, third piece of the payment. After that, fourth payment is due at the exchange of tracking numbers. No tracking number being exchanged, no fourth payment. A due date needs to be set. Why does a due date need to be fucking set? You feel what I'm saying? Why does a due date needs to be set? A due date needs to be set because that's your only leverage to secure your payment. Okay? If you put a due date in place for a manufacturer, they know that you mean business. And if you put a, 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 a guideline on that shit, like if you don't meet this by this date, Oh, we're, hey, that four payment all mine, but you still obligated to send my shit. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta put your foot down when you're handling business in Pakistan. Pakistan just wanna know for a fact that you got some money and you can make them some money. If that's you, they all in for it. You feel what I'm saying? Let's go. Next caller, what we got? Let me see what we got. Let me see what we got. Let me see what we got. Okay. The best way to run pre-order without delays or flops. Okay. Cool. This is a good, good question. This is going to be a great, great answer. You need a cameraman, bro. What the? F <laughs> oh, my bad. I forgot I'm actually recording. <laughs> this over is not my... Hey, podcast, this is what you're going to get. You feel what I'm saying? Matter of fact, the problem is I ain't fired up. Y'all take a little second to fire up. This, this, this is what we going to get. We going to get real comfortable, real chill. You know what I'm saying? We going to really kick back. We going we gonna to really just vibe out in the space. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll take a smoke break. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So the question was the best way to run pre-order without delays or flops. Okay, cool. So I'm finna give you the whole quick rundown of how to effectively do a pre 
order to avoid any flops or delays in your traffic right follow me it's gonna it's gonna be all over the place but just follow me um uh, yeah just follow along so pre-order it, it first thing first what you want to do is you need to start go ahead and let your audience know that something is on the way some type of way you got to let these people know that something is going to be on the way whether you start to market your mock-ups your you design your mock-ups anything like that you need to get a idea in your customer's brain that something is on the way right marketing is everything right so now that you've been your, your mock-up marketing going and everything like that now it's time to get a sample right so when you get those sample in you need to get in five samples five samples you need to get five samples don't be cheap cuz cheap don't get you paid spending money gets you paid don't be cheap cheap don't get you paid spending money get you paid get five samples right follow along with me so once you get these five samples in the next thing you need to do you need to go to your Shopify store you need to go set up the pre order manager okay go set up the pre order manager on your Shopify account go to pre order manager go set it up once you set up pre-order manager go through all the things that you know the the, the the little setups and everything go ahead and put in your expected um do your expected ship date your expected done date from the manufacturer and your expected um um release date your release date right so you're gonna put in all that and then after you do that, this is what you do. This is what you do, right? You wanna get these samples, you're gonna find you four influencers. You wanna send these samples out to four different influencers. You got it? Four different influencers need to have these samples. Make note that these influencers cannot post this shit, these videos, until the week of the drop. That is very important. They need to post it the week of the drop. You keep that last sample because you got weeks to promote. Okay? You got weeks to promote. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody said, look at the podcast cam. Hey, we going to keep it real raw over here. You feel what I'm saying? It ain't going to be all souped up yet. We going to get there. But you right. You right. You right. Let me, where were I at? Where was I at? Okay, so you're going to get the samples and you're going to keep the one for yourself. Now, the one that you keep for yourself, this is the one you're going to do giveaways with. You're going to do your daily promotions with it. You're going to do your outfit videos with it. You're going to do all that content shit like that with it. You feel what I'm saying? You're going to do all that content right there with it. Now, the week of the drop is when your influencers need to post. Now, this is what you need to do. You need to go to post scripts. Okay. P O S T S C R I P T S. You need to go to postscripts.com. Go ahead and get that set up. Okay? Because this is important. Once, once you start marketing, every market video need to go ahead and let them know at the end. I need y'all to click the link in my bio and leave me your phone number and your email. You got it? I need y'all to click the link in my bio and leave me your phone number and your email. That's every video, every video, at the end of every video, throw that shit in there because that is very important. The week of the promotion for your influencers, make sure you tell them. Whenever you post a video, just tell them. Click the link in such and such bio for the piece. That's all you got to tell them to do. Click the link in such and such bio for this piece let them do the rest okay now the pre-order manager is going to set up the system to notify your customers when the pre-order is going to end when it's going to start and it's going to give you a gateway to keep customers notified about the pre-order so if you want to send a message say today saying hey the manufacturer says it's going to take two more days on production you can go ahead and quickly do that through the pre-order manager and you want to say anything like that you can easily do it like that. You feel what I'm saying? And then this is your part to prevent delays. 
Now, the payment method thing is very important. The thing that I just said about the payment method, that is what you're going to use for the manufacturer. So your manufacturer need to go ahead and tell you however long it's going to take for him to get the minimum order quantity done. Okay? You have to get the minimum order quantity for the pre-order. This is why. This is why. It is very important to manipulate the customer's mind. Because when it's come to somebody buying from you for the first time, the only thing they worried about is being scammed or that something is fake or they ain't going to receive it. You need to get the minimum order quantity to go ahead and give out those few orders first to people that's going to, listen now, this is business. Business ain't always right, but it's always about making a dollar. You need to go ahead and get the orders to the people that post pictures and TikToks and shit like that. Make sure they get their orders in that minimum order quantity batch. So they can go ahead and start posting content of your shit. So if it is a delay, the people probably thinking that it was a lot of orders or any. You just got to think business sometimes, all right? I know we always want to thank customers, but sometimes you got to thank business. And in the business, you got to do what you got to do. You feel what I'm saying? You got to be able to finesse. So once you start doing that, that's going to give you a little bit of freedom on those emails. But a thing that you can do to go ahead and get those emails and shit handled, you can go to online job with an S dot ph online jobs dot ph once you go on there type in the email manager you can literally hire somebody from the philippines to run your email so every email you get somebody can easily <clears throat> easily answer that shit for you i got mine for seventy dollars a week my email manager makes seventy dollars a week and i get hundreds of emails a fucking week and she's answering them with no problem. And we talk on WhatsApp. Anytime some, somebody got a question that she don't know the answer to, she just send me a quick text message. I go ahead and get an answer. Easiest shit in the world. So if you want to go ahead and get that customer service part out the way, I highly suggest go to onlinejobs.ph and go hire your own email manager. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the system to run in the pre-order. If you put all that, sh that, that shit to work, your pre-order is going to be the best thing in the world. I'm telling you. And then in the, in the same sense, once you start to build that list, bro, you can drop whenever and never even have to promote no more. You got access to their phone number. You feel me? You got access to their phone number and their email. My nigga, I, was, I just shipped out like 90 orders a day and they ain't dropped since June. I'm just, I'm just. Whenever I feel like I want to make uh, some, some, some money and see if, how active my list is, I just send out a little discount code. You feel what I'm saying? I just go ahead and send out a little discount code. Hey, today I want y'all to get twenty percent off. Thanks for being a member of Hollywood Hideout. Boom, and see how many people go shop with you. And now it, 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 you might just be sitting around playing the game, and you look up on your phone, you done got ten orders. Just sitting down chilling. It's advantages to set up systems so you can make sure that you're going to forever be paid. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I just sit back and chill be like, hmm, I want to make 10 k today. Let me send out a quick test message, $20, $20 off of, of everybody order. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying, brother. I'm trying to get you out of game to set up your system so whatever you want to do, it can be right there at your fingertips. You just sitting back, chilling, collecting money. Systems need to be in place though, because if systems is never in place, you're only going to make money when you put in physical work, because you ain't got no systems. You must have systems, because <laughs> without systems, you're going to always have to physically work to make your money. That's all I'm saying. You got to rely on a system. A system has to be in place. And you got to stay down and disciplined based on your system. That's why discipline is so important. That's why it's so important. Let's see what the next question is. What's the next question? Uh, what's some of the best fashion influencers for best com conversions? 
with some of oh some good fashion influencers. I honestly, I promise you, I wish I had some off the top of my head, but I can't even think. Like it'd be so hard for me to even come up with people names, and it ain't even on no funny shit. Like I know people, but I can't even like that shit hard. Tips on I just gave you that question out. Yeah, man. Best websites for creating mockups. Uh, mockups. I make all my mockups on Procreate, but you got Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop. You got Illustrator. Uh, that's the two most common ones that I know. But I prefer Photoshop, me personally. Um, but yeah, man. But yeah, so let me see if we got a question that's gonna give me a good conversation. I need a good conversation question. Okay, boom. Wait, I need me a good conversation question. Good thing about having a cameraman, you can edit out the slow parts. <laughs> I like that. Hey, me, hey, this, bro, if y'all ain't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go do that shit right now. Go do that shit right now. It's getting uploaded. Yeah, this is getting uploaded. This is getting uploaded, y'all. Hold up, let me see if y'all can see the camera. Is the camera in the, in, the, in the thing? Yeah, it's right there. Boom, there you go. Yeah, this is getting uploaded. This is getting uploaded. So on, on here, we can really, like, yeah, you feel me? Yeah. So, so I just got the cue card. I got five minutes left. So uh, somebody throw out a quick question that I need to answer that y'all want to go back and re uh, review over and over again. I got five minutes left. I'm going to try to make these hoes little 30-minute clips. Little shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Some of the cool shit like that. Some of the cool little 30-minute shit. Somebody throw out a good question. That shit, the hit. I look. smoking with you best way to build your tiktok presence okay cool all right cool let's talk about it. let's talk about it. best way to best way to build your tiktok presence i like that question let's talk about it i'm gonna get it to you straight from the sauce i'm gonna get it to you straight from the sauce i'm gonna get it to you straight from the sauce And five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so boom. So next question is, how can you build your presence on TikTok? So TikTok is one of them apps you got to realize is basically still a kid's app. Like, it's a kid's app, but I know mostly on your algorithm you see adults. But the times that the algorithm spike. It's based off of kids' presence. Like, I, I know it sounds crazy, but this is how it is. So with TikTok, you got to understand these couple things. TikTok is organic. Very organic. TikTok is real. Very real. TikTok is capturing the audience. TikTok is making people follow along something. TikTok is giving the audience something to look forward to. Right? You got to be good at doing something that makes people want to continue watching what you're doing let me break that down a little bit more simpler you got to show them something that's worth watching that's all i'm saying show them something that's worth watching so 
For me, it was documenting the journey of becoming a brand owner. So me documenting what I was saying, or how I was saying it, but what I was showing and what I was giving. So when it comes to starting your, your content, you got to show the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because they need to see where you came from and how you came, how you going to where the hell you finna go to. Like, let me throw out a couple TikTokers that I know just blew up off of organic content. You got Keith Lee, that guy blew up off of organic content. You got, uh, and that shit, that's all I know. Uh, we gonna leave it right there. And me. <laughs> I'm gonna keep using me as a reference. But like, Keith Lee, you go back and look at his videos how I came up. It was just all literally just a raw consistent type thing and it established an audience of somebody that was looking forward to something over and over again from him. You feel what I'm saying? Like you gotta give them something or document something that's consistently growing or 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 showing something that that you do or that you're good at. Like for me, like take for instance my Instagram. On my Instagram, I'm daily showing different outfits and things of that nature that I can put together. And that's just showing how good I can dress. Not how good I can, you know what I'm saying, dress like somebody else. Or whatever the case may be, it's just showing how good I can put that shit on consistently. So it's consistently growing a following that's making people want to stick around so they just follow 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 like it's, a, it's this constant follows that's coming in because you're consistently doing something and the thing that i noticed the most about content is when you consistently stay on the same type of thing you grow the most like anytime i went on like a, a realm of doing the same type of thing a consistent amount of times that's when I grew the most in following sales and whatever the case may be anytime I just stuck around to what it was that I was good at doing for the, a, a period of time I just seen a growth every time like literally like it just happened like that anytime that's like so for for your brand if you consistently show your day-to-day -day process of building and establishing your brand. It's going to be so many people that's going to follow along with that journey because they seeing you go from building nothing to something. Like you was bad. <laughs> <laughs> now we good, we good. You can leave, you can leave, you can leave. All right. <laughs> oh, wow. TikTok, bro. TikTok is one of them apps you just... You gotta, you just gotta market on that, bro. Like, once you once you consistently start document your day, like your your day to day journey on TikTok, you are gonna really start to see the growth come in. Like, people gonna see you go from the ugly, like to the to the good. Like, they gonna really see you come up. You feel what I'm saying? So they will have something to go back and watch when they feel like. Damn, like the shit he's doing, I'm trying to do, and they go back and see, oh shit, he he was once where I'm at, and now they gravitate towards you because they starting to see that, boom, boom, boom. Now you establishing an audience, but all that shit is time. Like with building TikTok, it takes time. Like you can definitely hit a couple viral videos. Like you can have a couple viral clips, a couple viral hits here and there that you know what I'm saying might push you up but bouncing off of a viral video is probably the hardest thing to do on TikTok especially if it's a viral video that probably has no context to what you're trying to do or what you're trying to push towards it's going to be kind of hard to do that so TikTok is just a grind and if you're really serious about what you're doing TikTok and this is just going to be another fun source to just sharing your journey and seeing the growth of how many people can hop on board with what you're building is going to motivate you to go even harder. So like use TikTok as motivation. Motivate yourself enough every day to find something to do. You're not doing no work and since you fell in yourself right now. So if you don't have anything to vlog for the day, that means you wasted a day. And if you're wasting a day, you're really not really serious about what the fuck you're doing. You're supposed to have something to shoot every day now you can have a day to do nothing because creative people needs a day to do nothing you, you you need that 
But at the in the, in the sense, what I'm saying, it takes time to build this shit. It really do. But um, yeah, man, I really appreciate y'all for tuning in to this first clip, raw and uncut episode or whatever the podcast is going to be named. I'm going to take a little poll on what y'all think the podcast name should be called. And I'm going to just let y'all, you know what I'm saying, give me a couple answers or whatnot. But make sure y'all tap into the Sports Band Chat, best sports band chat in the world. Link in the bio for that. Make sure y'all go grab that ebook, get you some great manufacturers, the great system on how to build your credit, great system on how to run your system for your business and everything else. That link is in the bio. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Hollywood Shack underscore and on twi uh, TikTok at Hollywood Shack too. Uh, yeah, man. Your boy is out of there. And cut! You trying to catch the thing on you? We done. <laughs>